Hello and welcome. I am Ra Raziel, as always, as always, as always. And today I want to talk about big models. Well, see, first things first. I've got to kind of differentiate be be between big models and large models. Big models are like your tanks, your dreadnoughts, your great eagles, your incarnate sentinels, uh, your you know all those sort of things they're they're bigger than average they have a larger base and they are quite tall uh, model they're quite complicated compared to the basic infantry you probably got a few from a starter set it depends who where you go so these larger models these big models I should say this is now buying them separately outside of the starter set outside of the um, whole getting started part so this is like a purchase post that so like you've seen a tank that you like so you buy it and that's it now these I wouldn't always say these ones are the last things you should buy when it comes to building your army because they're not overly large they look kind of cool and they help build your confidence with more larger models and you get this feel of how a larger model is like to paint rather than you know, little miniatures and smaller men. These give you a kind of a better feeling on what they like to paint and how they like to build, and you can sort of really keep to grasp with this more complicated side of starting war gaming. And that's not a bad thing, and they're usually worth it. Actually, I like walkers, and I will usually, if I can, get some sort of large walker for any army I get. And I've got like for conquest, I have some incarnate sentinels. I got three of them. They're the larger models, and that's saying something for conquest because they're thirty-eight millimeter. But you know, it gave me a bit of a better idea on how Parabellum Games makes their larger models. It gives me a better feeling on how they fit together, and how you know the weight of the plastic can sometimes work against the glue, and stuff like that. And it was absolutely fun build, and I enjoyed them. The so the next thing is. The large models. Now, the large models, and I do mean large, sort of 8 inches or higher, you know. This is a completely def different kettle of fish because whereas with the big models and the infantry, you can usually just assemble them, then paint them. You know, it's a pretty much a one shot. You build them, you paint them, and they pretend to look good and look really nice you kind of have to change your tactic with painting these large models because so most because of how complicated they are and how different they are from building such thing like a dreadnought which is fine i mean like i said the dreadnought is kind of a stepping stone for you know something larger like the Crestorus knight but there is a different way of building and painting these because you'll find there's sometimes there's workings and detail which aren't completely covered from the armour plating and they're not complete but they're kind of hidden so you kind of sort of have to part build and then paint with certain models and so you kind of most of them you have to change your tactic when painting these fits and but here's the second sort of kicker if there's a lot of your confidence is based on how well you paint, how well you paint, how much passion you go in. It's not always just about skill. Skill is a major part. Don't get me wrong. Skill is a major part of paint of with your painting. And and if you're getting, if you're just new into war gaming, you might not feel personally. So not not coming. Everyone here, just, you might not feel that you're confident enough to paint something like a the Fallen Divinity for conquest. It's a fantastic looking model, don't get me wrong, but it is a large model. It's it's nice, it's big, I think it's, it's actually one of my favourite models at the moment. And I really, I'm really going to get one sooner or later, when I do my old, old Dominion. Though, if I had just started wargaming, I would see this model and I, I would go like, can I do this? Now, I'm all for you giving it a go. Like, you know, you kind of don't know if you can do it and you want to push yourself. 
that's fine. But if you get it, uh, if you start thinking, do you know what, I'm going to buy this, but you know, I'm not quite confident with my painting yet, whether or not to pull it off, I would say go and spend your money elsewhere. See, the one thing about these larger models are their price tag. They tend to be the £100 mark or even higher. And it's one of the few things in Parabellum Games I'm kind of uh, not quite happy with. They are more expensive than Games Workshop at £130 a pop or more. However, I have to say this, they are considered these artisanal models where they're more, I would say they're more designed for display rather than use. So there is that. So you're kind of having to put more effort into it. So yeah, I don't know, time and cost is up to you. But like I said, these do tend to be expensive and they tend to be a lot higher priced. And I don't like the idea of dropping a hundred pound on something that I may not paint for a long time. We, I, uh, last time I did this, and to my shame, it's still unpainted, is my Bane Blade. But when I originally built it and painted it, it wasn't the fact that I couldn't, uh, that I didn't have enough. I was less confident about building, about painting it. it. It kind of, I wasn't too sure for a long time. I was like, it's been on my shelf in grey for a long time. But now with my painting skill and my confidence more, I'm my issue with it now is whether or not to make it a Legion Bane Blade or a Imperial Guard Bane Blade. That's kind of my, where I'm at with it. I'm really thinking about putting it as a Legion Bane Blade to give my Imperial Fist. 405th Company, before anyone says about me and my hatred for Imperial Fist, means they are post-chapter of Crimson Fists, which is what makes them cool. Because I love the Crimson Fists. And that's just my personal story with a model. <coughs> anyway. So. If you don't feel confident enough to build it and paint it. Sort of put it on a back burner as in. I'm going to purchase this later. I'm going to buy this later. When I feel better with my painting and building. And always take the first steps of something. Like a Dreadnought or a tank. Something a bit smaller. But it kind of helps you build your confidence with building and painter, painting things that are larger than standard infantry and you kind of get an idea how much you need to spend as well with that because you're buying it outside of the start collecting or the you know the starter set anyway thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video on big models this is just my opinion i, <coughs> I do apologize again and this is just my opinion and i'd like to hear your thoughts down below as always let's have a nice discussion I do enjoy having a good discussion down down there. And I'll see you all in the next one. Of course, there is Raylan Games down below if you wish to save money on your wargaming. Up to 20% off. You can buy Conquest there, Manifu, Bolt Action, Wild Rest Exodus. Loads of models down there. And you get a decent discount. And I think it's, it's... I've seen it as one of the cheapest shops in general. That's just my opinion. I've seen Knights, uh, Imperial Knights are cheaper than other shops. Anyway. Next is Forbidden Planet, and um, they, you know, comics, DVDs, mangas, all that cool geeky merchandise that everybody loves and everyone enjoys that as well. There is my merchandise, stickers, cups, uh, notebooks, bags, t-shirts, what everyone else does, all with my artwork, some digital, some by hand. My comics, no digital work, just hand-drawn by me and written by me and published by me. Look at that, I'm a jack of all trades. Especially if you want to see Little Red Wedding Hood go ham on some Lovecrafting Rebels. There is also Skyforge. Never forget Skyforge. Good friend of mine. Give this, give this guy a click. Let's get him up in the algorithm. And finally, Patreon because business. Bye-bye.